All right guys, so recent model wise from Giga Berlin and with the BYD blade batteries are charging significantly faster than the current models that we have today. It's honestly quite a weird situation that BYD, a Chinese competitor to Tesla, is building batteries for Tesla as we speak. In all honesty, I think it's a really great thing because different companies that do provide different benefits and if we can all connect together, partner up, this is where the technology is going to start to grow and advance as we have a different vehicles that require different battery technology. All right, so the coolest thing here is that the Model Ys coming out of Giga Berlin are charging super, super fast. And that is all thanks to the Blade battery coming out of BYD factories. This is being installed and tested inside of the newest Model Ys. Now, before any of you guys get confused here, the Blade battery technology is essentially an LFP cell and that's formed into a shape of a blade. The format of it is what makes it special and how BYD has decided to do it is a lot better than what we currently have. This allows cooling and a bunch of other special magic stuff inside to make it charge extremely quick and that's about double the speed that you are having right now. Now before you guys jump the gun and ask if your vehicle has the blade battery or not, well it probably doesn't have it just because there are some regulatory issue that's going on right now and I'll talk about that later in the video. This new battery here with the BYD Blade battery has the same top charging end as the current models. However, there is one exception to that and this is what makes it very special. It can maintain a charging rate up to 50% longer than the current ones right now. What that means is when you begin your supercharging, it will maintain its max speed all the way up until at least 50% before it starts to taper down. During road trips, that is honestly where the majority of the charging is going to be at around a 10 to 50 percent mark and once it starts to taper down it will still be extremely quick compared to the current LFP and nickel pack. In comparison to a Catho LFP pack as soon as you plug it in you get roughly about 30 seconds to a minute before it starts to taper down and you'll be charging at speeds around 100 kilowatts so that makes your charging a lot longer in duration. So that means that if you are like myself and you are in a crunch for time during your road trips and you just want to quickly plug in and get going you don't have the patience for that break that you really really need essentially give it about five minutes and you have topped up maybe 50% of your pack and you're ready to go already now that is what makes this mind-blowing technology compared to what we have right now when you go to a supercharger you're gonna be plugging in for roughly about 15 to 30 minutes and that is the amount of time that most people say that it's perfect to use the bathroom but there are times where you don't need to use the bathroom you don't need to eat and you literally are there just to charge. Now let's take a look at this graph that I plop up on the screen. You can see the two type of battery charging technologies and their capacity. You can see that the cathode batteries charge really quickly at the top end and then it starts to taper down immediately. That's where it's going to drag on the amount of time that you're going to be at a supercharger. Whereas if you take a look at the blade battery here from BYD, it starts off at 100% peak performance and then it starts to taper off at around 45 to 50 percent and even then it's still charging much quicker than the cathode that we have in our vehicles today. So realistically if you are one of those people that love to charge from 10 percent to 80 percent you're not going to see the full benefits here but if you are one of those people that charge from 10 percent to say 60 percent and get going you're really going to see a big benefit in terms of charging speeds. To put this into real world perspective I could have saved around two hours on my recent road trip if I had charged with with the blade batteries. So I mean this is really great technology that's coming up and I'm sure there's going to be even faster and better ones in the future but the current LFP and the nickel battery is nothing to laugh at at this moment. It still charges very fast however it does take a little bit longer than if you had simply just filled up your tank with some gas. This is where a lot of people are criticizing EVs and saying that it does take longer and you are going to take those little breaks that you would try to convince people that you're going to need anyways comparing my gas vehicle to my Tesla and if I had to redo my trip again I would say that it would save me about three hours if I had taken my gas car and in terms of all the fill-ups that I had to do compared to having to sit at the supercharger with my Tesla plugged in one thing to take note here is that the amount of gas that's going into your tank doesn't differ depending on how cold or how hot the tank is whereas on the current Tesla right now you really have to precondition your battery you really have to do a bunch of things and the superchargers charge at different rates 
So this is where a lot of doubts and hesitancy comes when uh, people want to switch from ICE over to EVs. Now with this new blade battery, it does knock one thing off the list that I've made in my previous video about how LFP is subpar to the nickel packs. Things such as charging speed, cold weather performance, and the power output that it provides are still subpar compared to the nickel packs. This is why a lot of the vehicles that are the base model have the LFP packs in it right now, whereas the performance model do have the nickel battery but once this LFP blade battery arrives things are gonna completely change everything that we've talked about in those videos are completely wiped away we're gonna have a much faster charging speed battery performance in the cold now has improved so much and the power output issues are gonna be no longer an issue because it's going into the performance models the last and only thing that I do have concerns about is the overall weight of it I don't know how heavy the new blade battery is is, but if it is as it is right now, the LFP pack is substantially heavier and less energy dense than the current nickel ones. But yeah, overall, very, very exciting that the new battery techs are going into all of our Teslas very soon, and we are going to be seeing a lot longer range and faster charging speeds overall. Now, unfortunately, this blade battery is ramping up very slowly out of Giga Berlin. So if you guys do want this a battery tech inside of your vehicle, you will have to wait for some time. There is no estimated ETA for this one but there has been some rumors and one of you guys have brought up to my attention that the reason why the battery isn't currently ramping up very fast is because Tesla forgot to register the battery and that's why all the delays are happening. So regardless if that is the case or it's something else, I do appreciate you guys for sharing with me and if I am missing any other information, please drop it in the comments below. I love to discuss with you guys and I love to be corrected and I will update you guys and give you credit if there is something else that I've missed. So all in all, I hope you guys are are as excited as I am. Can't wait for all of this amazing stuff to come and all the negatives about EV to slowly fade away. Once we get to the point where charging up your vehicle is just as fast as filling up a gas tank, we will have the superiority and say that there is nothing wrong with owning an EV. There is completely no downsides whatsoever. Anyways guys, this should wrap it up for this one. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more updates coming up and I will keep you guys up to date. So make sure you guys hit that subscribe button, that bell notification, and this is just John, once again, peace out.